Hello, everybody. Um, so, yeah, my name is Garrett Hines, and I lead the technology side of Oracle. So, what I want to do today is I want to talk about kind of our M Health journey that we're on. But before getting into the, the details on that, I'll just give a, a little bit more background on Oracle and what we do. So, Oracle, at Oracle, our goal is to build the world's first AI coach for elite athletes and personal wellness. So our, our primary focus at the moment is around the elite side of things, but we, uh, our goal is to take what we develop at the elite side and make that available to the consumer and to the, mar to the mass market. So we were founded in uh, 2010 by um, a sports scientist called Dr. Brian Moore. Um, so he's a, a Galway native based out of Ren Moore, and he had uh, a wealth of experience in the sports science domain working across a range of different sports, but a particular focus around blood biomarkers. And that's kind of what sparked Oracle. He saw uh, a real niche in the blood biomarker area and the application of blood biomarker analysis to uh, elite sports science. So we work um, across a range of different sports, whether it's teams or individual athletes. So uh, from Premier League teams to the NBA, uh, a particular focus around uh, US sports at the moment. So we've got a significant presence in the NBA from a basketball perspective, American football, hockey teams, etc. Brian's background is in, in the Olympic sports. So we still have quite a number of Olympic athletes, track and field athletes. Um, Oregon Track Club in the US would be uh, one of our, our, our oldest and uh, tightest collaborations. So we're set up uh, a bit differently from a lot of organizations. We're, we're almost set up like a, a research institute. So we've got um, 19 PhDs um, on, on the team. So we have a team of about 30 in total. So that's a really significant portion of the overall team. Most of those 19 PhDs are on the sports science side. So we invest really, really heavily in that core sports science so that we have the credibility when we go to the teams and we go to the athletes that we can back up the products and the services that we're providing so we back it up with the, with the sports science. Um, we've run a number of awards recently, so the, the Data Science Award last year, more locally the uh, an ITAC Award, and uh, a number of uh, patents for the, the products and services that we, that we provide. So it's not something that we're, we're doing on our own. We have an extensive network of uh, national and global uh, partners that help us uh, deliver those, uh, those services. So whether it's on the sports science side, whether it's on the technology side or the data side. Um, crucially to call out, um, our, one of our most important collaborations is the, the local collaboration with uh, NUI Galway and with the Insight Center for Data Analytics. So we're an on-campus company. We're based in the incubator units, um, just the far side of the Quincentennial Bridge. Um, and we collaborate really, really closely with um, the Insight Center for Data Analytics uh, around the analysis of uh, the vast quantities of data that we get back from our, from our teams and our athletes. So what all this means is that we have the capabilities to go from the fundamental sports science research to do the analysis on the data we get back from that sports science and ultimately develop products and services around that. Crucially, everything that we do is backed by peer-reviewed publications. So across the team, we have over 300 uh, peer-reviewed publications in the sports science area. So what I want to talk about today is the importance of mobile technologies within Oracle. And as part of that, the, the journey we're on from a, an M Health perspective and from a, an elite sport to consumer perspective. So I'll be starting talking about our, our initial starting point around the biomarker analysis and where we're, where we're taking it from there. So back in um, the time of the uh, Sydney Olympics, Brian was working really, really closely with, with Sonia O'Sullivan in the, in the lead up to that. And he was, I guess, pioneering the application of blood biomarker analysis to uh, adapt and optimize training for Sonia. Um, so off the back of that, she was really successful. She got a, a silver medal. Um, she probably should have gotten the gold medal. Um, but um, off the back of that, we, he continued to uh, drive the research, uh, collaborate with individuals, and ultimately set up Oracle. So we have a very rich history in the terms of the blood biomarker bio analysis. 
So we're able to look at those blood biomarkers and identify, you know, are athletes likely to have, you know, tissue damage? Are there, is their immune system compromised? Are they under uh, too high of a training stress? Is there too high of a psychological stress? And ultimately try and make recommendations back to the teams that we're working with to make sure that their athletes are ready to perform when they step onto the track or step onto the court. But the challenge with uh, blood biomarkers, uh, traditional blood biomarkers, is that it requires a full venous sample. So it's not something that's anyway mobile. So the challenge that we had is how can we take something that's so massively powerful for us and make it scalable and, and, and make it something that we can do on a daily or a weekly basis with our teams rather than on you know, a quarterly basis. So what we did was, um, as part of our uh, underperforming, unexplained underperforming uh, athlete clinic, we were working with a number of different athletes. The, the athlete here in question is an elite rower. Um, so she was uh, suffering from unexplained underperformance syndrome. Um, so she'd gone from uh, meddling at an elite level down to struggling to walk down the stairs. So it was quite an extreme drop in, in, in performance. So as part of our analysis, we identified a set of biomarkers that were predictive of unexplained underperformance syndrome. And our goal then was, okay, from this sports science background, how can we take something like this and how can we scale it? So what we did was we, we identified a, a number of different providers who were able to provide that biomarker analysis in a point of care scenario. So from a, a single pinprick of blood, being able to take that, analyze it on the spot and get the results back with, within five minutes. So what we did was we, we, we created the, the full data value chain around that. So starting collaborating with that hardware provider, uh, doing the collection and then building up the software behind that. So in terms of taking that data, visualizing that data, analyzing that data and ultimately making the recommendations. So what we have is a, even though we're, we're showing a, um, a laptop in that screen, it's a, it's a fully responsive application. So it'll work on a laptop, tablet, uh, um, and, and mobile phone. So what we were able to do is we're able to take those blood biomarker results, combine that with some other data sources, uh, and ultimately make tailored recommendations for those individuals. So based on, their current readings and the trends and the way things are going, we're able to make specific recommendations around training load, nutrition, recovery, and then again, ultimately all of that is backed up uh, by publications. So as a, as a personal example, um, we're obviously limited in the sort of uh, athlete data that we, we can show, but uh, I have a personal sorry tale to tell where uh, my blood biomarkers was being analyzed last year. So I was training for the Dublin Marathon. Um, so this is, uh, shows my uh, blood biomarkers being analyzed throughout that training cycle. So you can see there, um, it, took, it takes uh, two or three uh, ex uh, tests before it stabilizes and we work out what your individual thresholds are. But everything was going great for the bulk of my training cycle. Now, unfortunately, right before the end of the Dublin Marathon in October, um, uh, in one of those blood biomarker tests, it, it uh, picked up uh, an issue. And what it turned out to be when I went to the doctor, I, ha I, I had developed uh, a chest infection. Uh, but what was really, really powerful for, for me was that there was this early uh, detection of an underlying illness that I wasn't quite aware of yet. I was instantly able to go to the doctor and, and action that and try and get my, uh, my results in line. Now, unfortunately, I didn't quite have enough window to you know, build my, myself back up, so the, the actual result in the marathon wasn't quite what I'd hoped for, but had it been you know, two or three days earlier, I think I would have been able to recover um, a lot better. So it was, it was great for me as an individual athlete to be able to uh, you know, take that technology, apply it to myself, and un understand the, the, the strengths that, that there was there. So another area uh, from an LM health perspective and from a sports science perspective that we've been uh, putting uh, a lot of uh, emphasis and a lot of investment in is the area of uh, female athlete research. So um, we identified that 
the area of female athlete research was, uh, there was little or no investment going into that. Um, traditionally, female athletes are just treated like smaller men. Um, but there's, there's all sorts of underlying issues, whether it's health issues or societal issues, that, that, sh that should be addressed as part of that. So, you know, why is it that uh, uh, there is a 50% drop-off in female sports participation from pre-puberty to, to the age of 17? Why is it that 20% less 14-year-olds, uh, female 14-year-olds take part in sport versus, versus, uh, versus the, their male counterparts? Um, so there's big participation issues there which have individual and, and, uh, and societal in, impacts there. And a lot of it is down, you know, down to puberty and, and the menstrual cycle. There's little or no uh, advanced research in, in this area. Uh, and then the knock-on effect of that is there's the, the level of education behind all of that is, is very, very limited. So if you look across any of the big sports, whether it's you know female soccer, whether it's ladies Gaelic football, and you look at the people who are making the training decisions for those individuals, they're nearly all male. So um, what is their level of exposure to the impacts of the menstrual cycle and, and, and puberty on, the, on these female athletes? And then from a performance perspective, uh, if we look at the, the female athletes who then do continue on and keep uh, exercising, three out of four of them uh, experience negative performance and training impacts as, as a result of the, of the menstrual cycle. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to tackle that on a, on a number of different fronts. And we have uh, two amazing uh, women who are, are leading this area for us. So we have uh, Georgie Brunvels um, there in the front holding the mobile phone. So she is a, uh, just finished her PhD in uh, female athlete research. So she's based out of uh, St. Mary's University. And uh, then we have uh, uh, Grania Conifree, who is our product manager on the female athlete side. And together, they've been trying to uh, spearhead a, a campaign to try and address this. So from a research perspective and from a kind of an edu educational perspective. So from a, to start uh, and to give a, a high level look at what we're doing in terms of the science side of things, and I, I should give a warning at this point, so I, I'm, not a, I'm not a scientist, so I'm going to keep this relatively high level for, for everybody's sake. Um, but the starting point for us was to get an understanding of um, you know, what, is the, what is the background research, to so do that systematic review of what is out there. Um, and the key finding there is, as you can see from Jordy's paper, is that there's very, very limited research there. So, you know, it's, it's clear that there are implications from a, a, a physiology, from a metabolism perspective, but the, the research was very, very limited. As a result of that, uh, we went then and we set up our own, uh, our, our own trials and our own research. Um, so working with smaller groups in St. Mary's University, so working with them really, really closely, and also taking a, a, a wider uh, more global approach working with um, uh, doing an, an online based uh, uh, study looking across female athletes uh, um, and throughout the world. So what we were able to do then is combine both of these things, so the systematic review and our own research and uh, provide a, a set of guidelines, so whether it's nutritional training, uh, recovery guidelines for female athletes based on where they're in their menstrual cycle. In order to make that available, you know, the, the, the obvious next step was to, to take a mobile approach with this. So what we have uh, just released is our second version of the uh, Fitter Woman uh, mobile application. So available on uh, Google Play and iTunes. So this application, it's completely free, so anybody can come along and they can download it. So I'd encourage you all to, uh, if, you're, if you're a female athlete or if you have a female athlete in your family or if you're a coach, uh, it'd be great if you could uh, download the app and, and have a look at it. Um, and what the app does is um, it starts by uh, allowing the female athlete to come along and they can track their cycle. So whether it's the actual days of menstruation or whether it's symptoms throughout the cycle. And off the back of that, uh, we're able to then tailor very specific recommendations on them. So whether it's training recommendations. So based on where you are in your cycle, should you be focusing on endurance training? Should you be focusing on strength training? Are there specific injury risks that you should be aware of? So um, 
I, I, I wasn't aware of, and I think a lot of uh, male coaches might be aware of, but around day 12 in the menstrual cycle, there's a significant increase in joint laxity. The impact that has is that um, there's a, a, a huge spike in ACL injuries in female athletes around that time. So little, little, small little interventions like an extended warm-up can have a really, really big, uh, a, a big impact there. So based on where you know, that tracking information, we're able to make that, those training and injury recommendations. Uh, there's also nutrition uh, changes. So with those hormonal fluctuations throughout the cycle, there are uh, different recipes or foods that are recommended that uh, the female athlete can get the, the most benefit from. And then there's uh, additional uh, information uh, for, for the athlete. So to give them a better understanding of what's actually happening in their body. So if they go out for a run and they have a particularly tough run, is that because their, their training isn't going well or is that something that, that is to be expected for where they are in, the, in their training cycle? So what we have is we have a number of, uh, we have a stories feature where we're able to push the latest research um, and the latest news for, to these female athletes um, uh, as it comes along. So, like I said, this, the, the app is it's pretty much it's hot off the press, so released um, a week and a half ago, so I'd encourage you all to go and uh, uh, download that and encourage your, your friends and family to download it as well. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it. So that kind of gives you a sense of um, Oracle, what we do, the importance of um, mHealth and mobile technologies in Oracle. So it's a journey we're on. We can see we're, from an mHealth perspective, we're probably a little bit more advanced on the female side. From a biomarker perspective, you know, we're, we're halfway there. We'd like to do additional work in terms of miniaturizing it, et cetera, but it's, uh, it's very, very important to us uh, now and in the future. Okay. Super. Thanks.